Let's bring in Sparsha Saha. She is Harvard University Department of Government Lecturer. She's joining us from Chicago, and she's joining us as part of our Women and Money segment sponsored by USAA. Now, Sparsha, I know that you have done research on how female candidates are perceived among the American electorate. So given that, what do you make of Goolsby's statement, not just Kamala Harris, but the other speakers that we saw in the convention and how that is going to play? Yeah, so uh, my co-author, Anna Catalana Weeks, who is at the University of Bath, and I conducted this research where we surveyed um, around 4,000 people. And we were asking sort of, are women who are perceived to be very ambitious, who are running for office, penalized by voters? Uh, and what we found repeatedly, um, survey after survey, was actually no, that voters don't have a problem with ambitious women uh, in politics. And this was this was surprising to us, but actually in line with a lot of research that finds that there isn't really voter discrimination against female candidates on the part of voters. Is this issue just going to die off with the generation that right now controls political parties? That generation is actually moving aside as we speak, because I think as what you've just said is that most of us actually appreciate strong women, strong men, that that's yeah. not a negative. No, absolutely. And and what we know, um, some really interesting research that's been done uh, has shown that in the last 10 years, um, bias against a potential female president has halved amongst people, amongst um, everyone in the U.S. This was a representative sample. And so we know that norms are actually changing and they're changing very quickly. Um, one, I think credit for this really has to be given to Hillary Clinton. Um, and I'm not the first to say this, but she kind of, you know, was the martyr, right? Um, but I think by, by what, what's kind of missed in that framework is that um, there's a redemption, right? And so we uh, all were kind of able to see the battles and the obstacles that women in politics face. And I think that really spurred this recognition and awareness awareness uh, of, of the issues that we're facing women. And, and I think really have sort of spurred these kinds of norms um, changing. What's left to change, I think, are um, party gatekeepers, right? The, the old men who, who kind of like hold that door. Uh, and, and I think they're very concerned that voters, right, worry, you know, about like, oh, is this woman too ambitious? And so hopefully they are able to kind of learn about our research and find that no, voters don't care. And in fact, they, they kind of like it. Sparsha, hi, Rick Newman here. Uh, the vice presidential uh, nominee doesn't usually do anything decisive for a presidential nominee. You think Kamala Harris uh, could be different? Um, yes, I think uh, we're, I, I don't know if we're ever gonna see um, a democratic ticket that's two white men ever again, maybe, right? Um, so I think in, in that way, it's very historic. So there's gonna be a lot of attention on it. The primary rule of uh, VPs is do no harm. Um, I think in we what we saw from her speech at the convention was, it was quite tame. And this was really her effort to kind of introduce herself to everyone. But I hope that they really unleash her uh, moving forward because voters do want to see the Kamala, the go-getter. They wanna see Kamala being, being the one who's gonna kind of give it give it to the other side. Uh, and that wasn't that wasn't what she was doing at the convention. I hope they change that decision. Sparsha, in a, uh, kind of the, the study, you kind of show how there's the difference between the US and the UK. Uh, and you said that US conservatives uh, were a little less, uh, I guess, supportive of uh, the yeah. determined uh, female uh, candidate. So I guess, yeah. does that put the US behind the UK? Uh, how does the the, the how do U.S. conservatives kind of push past that? Yeah, so in, in our survey, we, we did uh, a version in the U.K. and the U.S., and we found that actually in the U.K., there weren't any differences between parties, right? So the conservative party uh, and the liberals, um, and if anything, the conservatives were, were a little bit more supportive uh, of, of ambitious female candidates, and they ha they've had two female prime ministers who are conservative. So that institutional legacy matters. In the US, we did find this difference. Um, our study broke down perceived ambitiousness into, into three different types. And we saw that women on the right um, were not penalized for having kind of a per, like a personalistic ambition, like seeming bold, seeming like a tough negotiator, nor were they penalized for uh, wanting to change the um, agenda in a very ambitious way. Um, however, when it came to office seeking ambition, so when you're in a position and your eye is kind of on the next position after that, right? Like if you're a governor and you're kind of thinking about president one day, Republicans were a little less supportive of that. 
uh, than Democrats were. So our kind of takeaway was, look, women on the left can lean into all types of ambition. It might be a little trickier for women on the right who can lean into co certain kinds of ambition, but maybe be careful about the, the kind of presidential uh, you know, uh, office seeking as, uh, ambition. And we know that women on the right in the US um, really kind of struggle. Um, women on the left have made tremendous gains in the last decade that, and that hasn't really happened for women on the right. Uh, and so I hope to see uh, women on the right having a lot of success, um, hopefully in this election cycle and, and in future ones. And Sparsha, what you're saying also has implications for an eventual female president, right? Because that person would need to draw from presumably at least some folks on the on the left and the right. Yeah. Um, when is that going to happen? I mean, I know you're not a forecaster, right? You don't have a crystal ball, but yeah. it's like we're pretty overdue in the United States to have a female president. Yeah, I, I every time this question comes up from my students, from 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 folk I know, I, my response is just to go ugh. <laughs> uh, because it um, it's it's really long overdue. I think Kamala Harris is um, going to be in a really good position, uh, and I, and I hope she has. She keeps her aspirations up uh, because I think that would be that would be terrific. Uh, and I really would not be surprised if the Democrats um, in eight years or four years or whatever it is have a female nominee. Here's to ambitious women. Thank you yeah. so much, Sparsha. Sparsha Saha is Harvard University Department of Government lecturer. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.